And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Duria Venador, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a basal megalosaurid theropod that lived in the Middle Jurassic in what is now England in the Oolite Formation. We briefly mentioned this dinosaur in episode 47 when we covered Megalosaurus. As a reminder, Megalosaurus was a wastebasket taxon. David Norman in 1985 said that it was used as a quote-unquote dustbin. In other words, pretty much every theropod they found in England and the surrounding area for a while, they just threw in a Megalosaurus. Yes, including Duria Venator. (laughs) <laughs> so Duria Venator was considered to be medium-sized. It's estimated to be 16 to 23 feet or 5 to 7 meters long and weigh 2,200 pounds, about one ton. It probably looked similar to Megalosaurus with an elongated head, a long tail, walking on two legs. As a Megalosaurid, it probably had muscular arms to help catch and kill prey. And it had unique features in the jaw, including deep grooves. The vomer, which is part of the bone at the middle of the palate, was similar to Allosaurus. Allosaurus keeps coming up in this episode. (laughs) Daria Venator had curved serrated teeth, and its teeth were different from Megalosaurus, including in the way the front teeth of the lower jaw slanted forward. It had heterodont teeth, different teeth, and the teeth at the front of the lower jaw were longer than the teeth in the back. This may have helped Daria Venator pluck and grasp when eating. There were also replacement teeth visible in the tooth sockets. The type species is Duria venator hesperis. The genus name means dorset hunter, and the species name means the west or western. The fossils were found in 1882 in Dorset, near Sherburne. Interesting. So Duria is dorset? Yeah. In Latin, I guess? I guess so. Richard Owen described the front third of the skull, including part of the upper jaw, the right maxilla, part of the bone at the middle of the palate, that vomer, both dentaries, the lower jaw, and other parts of the lower jaw and associated teeth. And he described that in 1883 as Megalosaurus bucklandi. The fossils are now at the Natural History Museum in London, which makes sense if Richard Owen was the one describing them originally. Yeah. The fossils were found by Edward Clemenshaw when, according to Richard Owen, quote, blocks of this stone were in course of preparation for a building when indications of embedded fossils being detected by Mr. Clemenshaw on fractured surfaces of the quarry stones, he withdrew all such from the building yard and transmitted them to the British Museum for identification, end quote. So they were working on a building, he found the fossils, and they stopped for a while to send the fossils to the museum. The exact spot where the fossils were found is unclear, though in 1916, Richardson wrote that, quote, the site of the quarry in which the remains were found is very near the back of the houses on the north side of Cold Harbor Road, end quote. Very descriptive. (laughs) (laughs) The back of the houses. Mm -hmm. Maybe there weren't that many houses on that road at that point. Maybe. (laughs) As I said, Richard Owen thought these fossils were Megalosaurus bucklandi. Megalosaurus bucklandi the skull was only known from fragments. Owen wrote that the differences between the fossils that Clemenshaw found and the Megalosaurus bucklandi were in the size of the jaw, but that the teeth were similar in size, form, and structure. So, quote, there was no ground for predicating distinction of species, end quote. Owen also thought that the large opening behind the maxilla was an eye socket. Now we know that to be the opening or fenestra in front of the eye socket. And based on this, he estimated the diameter of the eyeball to be two inches. Which is smaller than it is, I think. Probably. Could be about right. I don't know. I don't think that's the right size since he was estimating it based on the opening in front of the eye socket. Yeah, unless he's right for the wrong reasons. Mm. In 1926... Friedrich von Huhn based his skull reconstruction of Megalosaurus bucklandi on the Dorset specimen fossils. But he also said that many of the fossils assigned to Megalosaurus probably weren't Megalosaurus. So there, people were thinking that pretty early on. In 1964, Alec Walker found that the specimen from Dorset was older than Megalosaurus bucklandi and, quote, at least specifically distinct from the latter. They also found small differences in the jaws and differences in the tooth sockets. 
In 1974, Michael Waldman redescribed the Dorset specimen and renamed it as Megalosaurus hesperus. He found differences in the number of teeth and said that Megalosaurus hesperus had more teeth, but that he couldn't compare any further because there weren't enough fossils. He also found that the premaxilla was similar to Allosaurus, but found Megalosaurus hesperus and Allosaurus to be different due to the way the jaws curve and the position of the tooth carina, which relates to the cutting edge of the tooth. Yeah, it's basically the serrated side that goes into the meat. (laughs) Into the meat. (laughs) Now, multiple people question Megalosaurus hesperus. Gregory Paul listed it as Megalosaurus question mark hesperus, and Tom Holtz in 2000 referred to it as Megalosaurus in quotes hesperus, just as some examples, people questioning it. Samuel Wells and Jaime Emilio Powell planned to rename Megalosaurus Hesperus as Walkersaurus, but then that wasn't published, so that name's considered to be Nomum Nudum. In 2004, Holtz and others also said that there was no diagnostic feature of Megalosaurus Hesperus, though it could still be its own species. And Darren Nation and David Martill in 2007 found it to be a valid species, but probably wasn't Megalosaurus. Then in 2008, Roger Benson and others found that only the fragment of the jaw that was used to name Megalosaurus was definitely Megalosaurus bucklandi. Later, though, they did find a few more fossils also belonged to Megalosaurus bucklandi, but not the Dorset specimen. And then later in 2008, Roger Benson re-described Megalosaurus hesperus and found it to be different enough to rename it as Duria venator. So that's when the name came into being was 2008? Yes. So fairly recent. Uh, other animals that lived around the same time and place as Duria venator include the megalosaurid magnosaurus and sauropods, stegosaurs, ornithopods, and marine invertebrates. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.